We have a priest in our community, and when he was pastor, he commented on, on these, these parables where the faithful servants are put in charge or put in charge of cities, and, and he was just a really busy pastor at the time with a lot of responsibility, and he said, the last thing I want as a reward is to be put in charge of more things. He says, the reward I want in heaven is a hammock in the shade. That's it. <laughs> you know, no responsibility. <laughs> But I guess the idea is, is that uh, in heaven, first of all, we will reign with the Lord. In heaven, the Lord will take us to a whole other level. You know, we will be kings and queens in some mysterious way. We will be given dominion to reign in some mysterious way. Scripture says that. Again, in heaven, we'll go to a whole other level of of I don't know what, living. Um, but the idea is, is if we've been found worthy for eternal life in heaven, we will reign. But we'll have a great support staff you know, who will be wonderful to work with. You know, it's kind of like the fishermen who never want to retire because they love their boat. They love getting on that boat and their, their, their crew of fishermen, their, their, their best friends, every day with the buddies, getting on the boat, going out fishing. That's all they want to do. And the other principle is in heaven, everything is leisurely. Everything is fun. Everything is enjoyable. Everything is restful. Even activity. Everything is leisurely. And so whatever it means for us to reign in the next life uh, will be wonderful beyond our wildest imaginations. And I'm sure there'll also be a hammock in the shade for us to rest into. We'll get it all. It's, heaven is the fulfillment of all desire. Now, in the first reading from Revelation, we, we get one of these images of heaven. And uh, in Scripture, when we're given images of heaven, some of the imagery is kind of strange or odd. You know, we hear of creatures full of eyes and all of this. And this is pointing to two things. Uh, one is um, heaven is beyond our wildest imagination. It's beyond our compre comprehension. You know, it's not just like, oh, there's a nice house, a nice gardens, a nice people. I mean, yeah, but you know, to a millionth degree. And so when a person, you know, uh, describes heaven, you know, has an experience of heaven, like we hear in Scripture a number of times, it's beyond our wildest imagination. But there's, there's something of it that we, we, we can grasp, you know. And so um, we are meant to meditate on the wonder of heaven because it's in Scripture, and we're supposed to meditate on Scripture. And our Lord Jesus repeatedly reminds us that we're made for heaven, you know, and also the apostles. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so, you know, I'm always encouraging people, contemplate the mystery of heaven. Look at these Scriptures. Uh, and also the second thing. So the first thing is it's, it's strange and odd because it's beyond our comprehension. But also, you know, uh, this is all also symbolism, and so we can learn about what it means for creatures to be, you know, full of eyes. I mean, that's, a, that's an image for, for just knowing and seeing and understanding at a whole other level. So, you know, as we study our faith and study Scripture, we should learn these things. But the point is, is when we meditate on the mystery of heaven based on Scripture and based on, you know, the saints and mystics, in our meditation, God will meet us. He will visit us. He will give us light. He will give us grace, just like he opened the eyes of the disciples to understand the scriptures. And so in this life, the Lord will give us a little hint of heaven, a little taste of heaven. We might not, like some mystics, be taken up, you know, to heaven, the seventh heaven, and, you know, be able to have these wonderful mystical experiences. But I believe every Christian who's living in the Spirit can, can, can taste, can get these hints. And again, sometimes it's just the most ordinary things, like a beautiful winter wonderland, you know, the snow on the trees and the snow falling and all of that. And in the presence of God, you know, when we're, when we're living in, in God's grace, we experience His presence. Like, remember, heaven is God. <laughs> if you're abiding in God and experiencing His love and His mercy and His goodness, that's kind of a real hint of heaven, you know, being with God and again, seeing his blessings and his glory. And the, the, the idea is, is when we allow the Lord, you know, to visit us and when he gives us these senses, these hints of heaven, it drives us. 
It drives us to carry the cross every day. It drives us to persevere. It drives us to keep going. It drives us to make you know, right decisions, to keep fighting the good fight, to, to, to keep going, to persevere to the end. And so again, to me, it's important for us to meditate on our destiny.